This film is a true documentary which shows the construction of one of the finest radial tires in the industry. After viewing this film, we believe you will understand more fully why Phillips, after careful investigation of today's tire manufacturers, selected the General Tire and Rubber Company to produce the Phillips 66 radial steel belted tire. What you are about to see here, few people have ever seen before. The birth of not just a tire, but a radial tire built by General. A tire built to survive and more in a tire's quick world of lights and lines and signs and instructions of danger and emergencies, all kinds of emergencies, all of them now. The things a tire must do, it must do well, for many reasons, some of them pretty small. In a tire's world, margins are scant. There isn't much room for failure. Think about your tire for a minute and what it does. It is round and black, stands two and a half feet tall, and weighs about 25 pounds. It must freeze, broil, turn, get soaked, be crushed, and bounce constantly for years. A tire is tough. Radials, general radials, are tougher, different, more sophisticated to do a better all-around job. Where the cord in the body of the popular bias-belted tire is built in at an angle, the cord in a radial tire runs straight across from bead to bead, a flat out 90 degrees to the direction of roll. A small thing, you bet, but well worth it. Let's see now how a radial tire gets that way, how it is born, what goes into it, and why. But let's start at the beginning. Like every fabricated product, tires call for planning, a lot of planning, intricate, detailed, and exact. Plans like these with a thousand calculations are made remade and revised, and more often than not, discarded, failed to measure up. Prototypes are built in the lab and tested extensively. Many are found wanting. A radial tire is literally a machine of many parts, involving such special terms as inner liner, radial plies, turn-up plies, breaker belts, bead wire, cover, filler, chafer, toe, heel, lower sidewall, sidewall, upper sidewall, white wall, shoulder, sidewall buttress, under tread, tread, voids, Sipes. How well this machine performs, how safely, depends upon how well it is built. Each step is critical. Each affects tire life. The recipe for a tire calls for Indonesian and Malayan rubber, man-made rubber, from General's own complex in Odessa, Texas. Carbon black and a dozen chemicals. Steel. Fabric. Tire making starts with rubber, chewed up in a two-story Banbury, mixed thoroughly. Batch cycle for a 450-pound bite, 15 minutes. Temperature, 340 degrees. From the Banbury, the new compound drops into a mill, the first in a long series, where it is pressed into more easily handled sheets. After a bath in a whitish chemical solution to prevent tackiness, the rubber moves along on a drying conveyor to skids for distribution to further milling. This is the birthplace of General's line of tough, long-lasting rubber. Mileage starts here. So does stopping power and durability. From the initial milling, 
Traveling by a conveyor, the rubber moves along for further processing. Some is destined for tread, conveyed directly to huge temperature-controlled extruders, trimmed to predetermined widths, cut to length. and folded all automatically to the closest possible tolerances. Other rubber becomes sidewalls, gleaming white at first, then black, coated for in-process protection. This is Aldora, Georgia, where all fabric used in general tires, rayon, nylon, polyester, and fiberglass is finished and woven to specifications. The right denier, the right number of strands, twisted precisely and woven into tire fabric, the sole of the tire. Most fabric is then bathed in General's exclusive Gentac diff that makes the strongest possible bond between rubber and cord a vital factor. It is all electronic, automatic, complex tempered finely in a roller-laden oven. The cord moves to Akron, Waco, Mayfield, Charlotte, and Bryan, ready for use. This is a calendar. Here, for the first time, rubber and fabric are combined. Atomic energy plays a role. Measuring is done with beta rays from strontium-90, a byproduct of uranium processing. General was the first in the industry to use this vastly improved method. Better quality? Always. After calendaring, the tough, atomically gauged fabric, cut on a bias, is spliced a notch closer to the finished tire. Thickness is precise, angles are perfect, specifications are demanding. This is the Creole room, the key to steel belted radial tire production. 720 spools electronically controlled for tension in a strictly controlled atmosphere feed literally miles of fine, specially coated steel wire through precision guides, 26 ends to the inch exactly, 28 inches wide. The system, by the way, is exclusive, largely developed and implemented by General Tire engineers. Belts, steel safety belts for radials start life here. Wire is fed directly into a calendar where it is sandwiched between thin rubber sheets to become the backbone of tires. Fabric for radials. Then on a high-speed precision cutter, the fabric is sliced into carefully measured widths. Other types of belt fabric used in radials, rayon, polyester, and fiberglass, go through a similar cutting process. The material is inspected, spliced, and wound into rolls. Other wire, a different type, is processed into beads. In tire building, beads are pretty important. They keep the tire on the wheel. Bead failure is tire failure. In place, a bead looks like this. A set number of wires, high tensile stuff, in an even pattern, with the strength of a cable. Now, here, all of them, Treads, plies, cushions, and beads begin to come together on the General Tire single-stage radial tire building machine, an almost unbelievably complex piece of equipment, electronically controlled with many pneumatic functions, precise to the nth degree, all under the direction of a master tire builder, one of the most exacting, highest-paid jobs in the industry. Breakers, or belts, and tire tread elements are built here on this big collapsible drum. Belts are first, a set number, each with a vital job to do. Here is where reliability takes form. 
workmanship, materials, positioning. Demanding tolerances leave no room for error, human or mechanical. The tread comes next, centered automatically, checked and double checked visually with electronic guide lights. Perfection is mandatory. The final test may come at 70 miles an hour. Belts and tread are stitched by the machine in one operation. And there it is, the tread and breaker element complete, ready to put onto the tire body held in a pneumatic grip. The builder moves to the right side of the single stage machine now. And on electric cue, the servicer moves in with the inner liner and ply stocks. It must present the material. Here the inner liner, easily and smoothly without a hitch. The unit holds enough material to build 30 tires, all prepared and ready to go. The plies are next, one after the other, from the inside out. Stability comes to life at this point. The type of cord, the angle, ply thickness, adhesion, all are important, vital in terms of safety, in terms of durability. Compromise is out of the question. Let's watch the machine place the beads all by itself. Nothing to it. It's electro-pneumatic mechanical magic. Now the sidewalls are put in place guided precisely by projector line lights. No room for error. The sidewall is comprised of two separate strips. A button is pushed, and the machine goes smoothly into action. The transfer ring brings the tread and belts to the bodybuilding drum. Centering is automatic and exact to one one thousandth of an inch. Contact. The transfer ring releases its cargo. Presto, for the first time, we have a tire partially formed, a little more stitching, a button pushed, and there it is, a green tire, a general radio ready for curing. Moving now, hundreds of them, one step nearer completion. Into the mold. Curing time, 15 minutes. Temperature, 300 degrees. The whole molding operation makes maximum use of automation. Tires arrive on station. Weight are loaded, cured, and unloaded without supervision at the command of an intricate system of electrical relays and signals, carefully pre-programmed.
Here, for the first time, a tire, a general tire. Some years back, general engineers found that inflating a freshly cured tire paid off in more mileage, extra strength. The process is called post-inflation. It means that the new tire is mounted and inflated like this. An extra step, but well worth it. After molding and post-inflation, the flash is trimmed off. Then, one more inspection. We've said little about inspection, but General's quality control and inspection systems are the most exacting in the industry. Without a slip, this unit expertly buffs away the white sidewall's protective covering. It's a beauty treatment. Moving tires and materials in plant is highly automated. Miles of conveyors do the job. Balancing done on this machine is precise. Individually, untouched, each tire is balanced automatically. Smoother riding is assured. After a dozen inspections, after precision balancing, there is yet another step. Calibration, the ultimate test for uniformity, for tiny internal force variations adversely affecting tire ride and performance. This is what does it, the tire uniformity machine, a computerized electromechanical marvel 10 years in development by general tire engineers. It automatically, right on the production line, detects tiny radial force variations, pinpoints their location, and makes the necessary corrections. It goes a long way toward solving the age-old problem of vibration in tires. The result? Calibrated tires. Smoother, quieter running tires. General tires. Radials. Good tires built to answer questions of where and how far with real confidence and peace of mind. Tires built to thrive in a down-to-earth roll where the constant unexpected demands a hefty margin of safety. The rewards of all this this care and concern are as rich and broad as the land and imagination and the roads that bring the two together. <laughs>